Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to animate your global header with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so here we are in the admin dashboard. So the very first thing we need to do is to come all the way down here to the bottom, click on theme builder, and then we're going to add a global header. So here I'm going to click on add global header, build global header. And then we're going to build this from scratch. Next, we want to just close this for now. And then we want to go into our section settings, click on design. And then we're going to come all the way down here to spacing and give this zero padding both to the top and the bottom. Next, we want to come over here to box shadow. And we are going to go with this first uh, style here. And um, the next thing we need to do here is to add our blur strength. And we're going to set this to, in fact, this needs to be the box shadow blur strength. So here we need to set this to 80 and then we also need to adjust our color here. So I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool and just paste my values between the brackets. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So now I have my shadow color. The next thing we need to do to make sure that our header is above all the content on our page is to come over here to the advanced tab, click on visibility and on the Z index. In fact, the Z index now is here on position. You want to drag this all the way up to, let's say about 500. If you want, you can just add it, you know, to 900 or whatever it is. As long as it's the highest item on the page, it's good. Now it's time to add our column structure. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to come over here, click on this plus button. And the column structure I'm going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now, before we actually add all our modules, what we need to do is to go into our row settings, click on design. And then here in sizing, make sure use custom gutter width is set to yes. And we want this reduced all the way to one because this is the space between the columns. We don't want any spaces between the columns. Great. All right, moving on. Equalize column heights, make sure it's set to yes. Now here on the width is very important. We need to set this to 100% and maximum width 100%. Now this ensures that this row is edge to edge. Now let's head over here to spacing and here we're going to add a padding of zero both to the top and the bottom. Now let's head over here to advanced tab, click on visibility and here on the horizontal overflow we're going to set this to visible and on the vertical as well, set it to visible. Now it's time to add our background colors for all our columns. So I'm going to click here on content. Let's start with the first column here. Click on this little gear icon, click on background. And then I'm just going to click on this plus button to add my color. So that's going to be my color right here. Go back. Next, I'm going to add my second color. And I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on this plus button, add my color, go back. And now we're going to add the color for the last column. So I'm going to click on this gear icon, click on the plus button, paste my color in here. Now the next stage is to add some top and bottom padding for each and every column. So I'm going to come back over here and start with this very first column, click on design spacing. So my top padding here is going to be 0.5 VW. I'm going to add the same for the bottom as well. Go back. Now you need to do the same for the other two columns. So the next step now is if we want to make sure that all the column content is vertically centered, we need to add these lines of CSS code. And again, like I said, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so let's start with the first column. So I'm going to come over here, click on this gear icon, advanced, custom CSS, and in, in the main element, this is the code we need to enter. Now you need to do this to the other two columns as well. So go ahead and do that. Now, finally, on column one, we also need to add a Z index of 10. So I'm going to come over here to this little gear icon, advanced position, and then we want to add 10 here to our Z index. Now it's time to add all our menus. So I'm going to save this save this one more time. So let's start off here with the first column. So I'm going to click on this plus button and let's add our menu. So I'm going to search for my menu module here and select it. And over here now, this is very important. If you want your menus to show, you need to make sure that you've created a menu first and then you select it here on this drop down. So mine is already created. So I'm going to go with my main menu. I'm going to come over here to my logo, click on this plus button. And now I'm going to upload my logo. So in your case, you need to upload a logo that you, I mean, for your company or for your website. In this case, I'm just going to use one of our logos here from our layout packs. Click upload an image. And then right now you can see we have this ugly background. It's not really looking cool here. So to remove it, all you have to do is to come over here to background and then click on transparent. Now let's head over here to the design tab. So for our layout, we want to make sure this is set to left aligned. 
And for our drop down menu direction, it needs to be set to downwards. Now let's work on our menu text. So we're gonna come over here. So for the font here, we're gonna set this to monster at, search for it here and there it is, I'm gonna select it. And for our menu text color, we're gonna set this to black. And then over here for our menu text size, we're gonna set this to 0.7. VW. Now it's important now that we go in and also set the sizes for the tablet and the smartphone. So I'm going to hover over here on the menu text. Then I'm going to click on this little icon, choose my tablet here. I'm going to add two VW for my size. Go to my phone, set this to three VW. Now we're going to go to our drop down settings. So I'm going to come over here to drop down menu. So all I need to do here is to add my drop down menu color and set this to white. So over here on the line color, set this to white. Next, we need to go to our icon color. So I'm gonna click here on icons and here for my hamburger icon. So I'm gonna click here on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. Now, as you can see, this logo here is way too big. We need to reduce the size. So what I'm gonna do is to come over here to logo. In fact, we need to um, all the way down here to sizing and logo max width. This is what we need. Set it to six VW. Now let's set it up. Let's set it up for the tablet as well. So I'm gonna click on this little icon, click on tablet. And on the tablet, you can see it's way too small. Let's set it to nine VW. On the phone, we're gonna set this to 13 VW. This is the color. You can see our hamburger icon color there has been changed as well. Now let's head over and set this back to desktop. So the next thing we need to do is to come over here to spacing and we are just going to give this a margin of 2VW both to the left and the right just to give this a bit of breathing space. So pretty much we're done here. I'm going to save. Next we're going to come over here to this first column and add a code module. So I'm going to add. In fact right now as you can see I'm unable to add a second uh, module here. So I'm going to click on this three little dots, come over here to wireframe mode, and now I can add it here. So this needs to be a code module. So I'm going to select it. And in this code module, I'm going to add this code. So again, as I mentioned before, this will be in the link out in the show notes below. All right, so now I can save this. And then we're going to switch back over here to the desktop view. Over here on the second column, let's add some social media icons. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for social media, select my social media follow. And to add more social media icons here, you just click on this plus button and click on this drop down. Then you can choose from any of these down here. So let's say we need to add Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now we need to go into each and every one of these and reset item styles. So I'm going to right click here, click on reset item styles. And once you do that, it removes this color here. So I'm going to do the same. And all we're going to be left with is just the icons. Now let's head over here to design alignment. We also want this centered. Now remember, you also need to come back over here into each and every item here and add your uh, link URL. So right now I'm just going to add a blank one, but in your case, you want to add your link URL to your Facebook, Twitter, and also Instagram. All right. So with that done, I'm going to save this, save it one more time. And then over here now I am going to add a button. So I'm going to search for it, select it. So over here, you can just add your text. So in this case, I'm just going to say sign up. And then on the link here, this is where you need to add your button link URL. And then next, I'm going to come over here to design alignment. And again, for this to look really nice, it needs to be centered. So now I've just gone ahead and centered it. So now we need to style the button. So for us to style the button, we need to come over here and choose button. And then we want to use, uh, and then here where it says use custom styles for button, activate it to yes. And now this gives us the ability to go in and start customizing our button. All right. So what I'm going to do now is to start off by adding our button text size. So I'm going to come over here, set my size to one VW, my text color white. And for my border width, I'm going to set this to zero. And then moving down for our button border radius, this needs to be set to zero as well. Now for our font, as you, if you recall, we used monster rat for here, for this font here, we need to do the same. Let's choose monster rat. And then for our font weight, we're going to make this ultra bold style. We're going to make it all uppercase. So pretty much we're almost done here. I'm going to save this. Now we need to add our animation. So we're going to start here with column one. So let's head over here to our row settings. 
So for column one, what we're going to do for animation style is to, in fact, come over here to design animation. And uh, we are going to do the zoom style. So I'm going to come over here and select it. Animation direction, we're going to set this to up. And for the starting opacity, we're going to set this to 100%. So we're going to save this. Now let's move on to the second column because the animation we're going to use here is slightly different. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, design, animation. And we're also going to use the zoom, but this time our animation direction is going to be down. Animation delay is going to be 500 and the opacity is going to be 100. So now finally, we're going to do the third column. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, design, animation, zoom. And for our animation direction here, it needs to be up animation delay. Let's set this to a thousand. And finally, for the starting opacity, we're going to set this to a hundred. So now that we've added all our animations to our columns, I'm going to save this, save this one more time. Now we need to go into each and every one of these modules. So I'm going to start off here with my menu. And then I'm going to come over here to design animation fade animation delay. Here we're going to uh, set our animation delay to 1500. Now you need to do this for each and every one of these modules. So go ahead and do that. So pretty much this is all we need to do. Now, if you want to style this in a different way, all you have to do is to play around with these different animation styles. So you can use a slide, you can use fold, you can use bounce and so on. So there's so many opportunities here to use different types of animations, but Basically, this is how you do it. So I'm going to save here. We're going to save the builder settings, close out of this, save and exit. And now we also need to save the global header. Great. So now let's take a look at our website and see the animation. There we go. So you can see there our animation is happening and everything comes to life. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.